folks, and welcome to today's GSC. And I'm going down that road. Yep. I'm talking about bedwetting. You know, that time of night when you're a bit fluffy in the bed. And for some reason, you're having happy thoughts. And guess what? Yeah, the accident occurs. Now, when you're a child and it happens, it's okay. According to medical reports, it's actually much more common than I thought. They say that bladder control wasn't developed. Well, you were pissing in your diapers for a long time, I guess that's fine until you're about two or three years old. But when you get to 12 and you're still pissing in your pants, there's an issue there. They say that it's called nocturnal uresis. Still a fancy word for pissing in your pants. The truth is that more than 50% of the people who urinate in bed at night actually have relatives who did the same. Mm -hmm. Of course, Uncle Bob never wanted to tell you that, did he? Now, medical experts said that there's reasons for this. Too much caffeine before you go to bed. I'm thinking, how many three-year-olds I know drink coffee? Or stress and worry. Excuse me? Stress and worry between a one and a five-year-old? What are they worried about? How, you know, their knees getting sore from crawling all day long? Or the fact that they need to worry about how much poo-poo they're eating out of the cat box? What are you freaking nuts? No kid stresses out between the ages of one and five. Uh, they just give temper tantrums. Actually, the people that are actually stressed out are the parents because they're giving freaking temper tantrums. If, listen, if you're, you know, you got a deep sleeper or you have muscle problems, that's fine. But don't go tell me it's, it's freaking stress. Laziness, maybe. Deep sleep. Yeah, I can understand that. So, what's the cure? Well, today's standards, it's pretty easy, they say. They have these stores. Look online, there's tons of bedwetting stores. Bedwetting stores? I didn't know they had such a thing. But, they give you this little pad. Several devices. This is the interesting one. One of them actually is a little pad that you slip into your underwear at night. This is also male and female. And then basically what it is is that during the middle of the night, what happens is, is that the as soon as the, the pee, pee touches it kind of a thing, sends off a wireless signal to a box on your desk there, and of course the alarm will wake you up and say, hey, stop, right? Meanwhile, there's another wireless transmitter in your parents' room designed to wake them up and say, hey, listen, your kid's going, you need to go get his ass up. Now, that sounds fine and dandy, however, my parents would never, ever, ever think about startling me like that. It just doesn't seem right. They like the idea of being woken up. That's great. They don't mind being woken up at two o'clock in the morning just because I read to bed. They like the idea of gently coming into my room and just making sure that I'm all right. And, you know, they want to stop me. So obviously what they did, the only thing that possibly could be, they set off the large cannon two feet away from my freaking ears. Boom! That ought to freaking wake your ass up. Plus also squeeze that bladder muscle. To this day, I have issues about that. As a matter of fact, I think I can actually sit here and drink 15 cups of coffee and I won't have to piss for a week if I don't want to. Oh, I'll be in pain, but trust me, I'd rather ignore that rather than that, listen to that cannon fire subconsciously going off in the back of my mind. Mm. Now, today's methods are pretty weird. They have bed pads that, you know, designed to, to, to hook up to a box and, it, it, you know, as soon as the urine hits it, it wakes you up and startles you with an alarm and stuff like that. Or they have a, a wearable device where actually sits a little alarm that sits on your collar and a wire that goes down to a transmitter that's located in your underwear. And as soon as you wee on it, it sends a, a beeper right next to you going, beep, 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 get your ass up. And that's supposed to, like, cure you of your, uh, of, of, of your bedwetting problems. Now, according to them, it takes several months. So it takes a while, so parents must be patient, all right? It didn't happen like that in my day. In my day, it was like not common at all. And of course, people by today's standards say, hey, it's common. You're not supposed to traumatize the kid. It's common, common, sure. Common like fucking leprosy. What are you, crazy? No. So anything that's out of the, out of the whack, people don't want to talk about. Your parents never did. Of course, this ruined my social life. I didn't really have one. I didn't go to, you know, Boy Scouts or, or, or worry about camping or going out with friends or having sleepovers. None of that shit that you kids do today, I can't do anyway. I could never do. What they did was this. After some desperate research or deals, 
They happen to find in the back of a magazine a little tiny article. Kids bedding wed, embarrassing solutions, call us. All right, so my parents did. Dude, they searched high and low to find someone that can help this poor child. He keeps pissing his pants. I'm so embarrassed. What do you mean I'm embarrassed? How do you think I feel? I, I couldn't go out, I couldn't do nothing. Actually, I think I was more depressed because I couldn't go anywhere. Then I had to, to worry about you know, what my parents thought. But, bless them, they went ahead and found the only man in town that can take care of me. The one hope. The only hope. The exorcist. Anyway, this guy showed up in the middle of the night, obviously, as you can tell by the picture. I have to be honest. And the main reason why is that he had a German accent went by the name of Herr Müller once he's wearing some Nazi logos on his lapel, which he was very proud of. And that really bothered me. Anyway, the guy explains to my parents that it's, hey, it's just a matter of weak muscles, things like that. So we're going to go ahead and cure you. No problem. We'll put this pad, big, large rubber mat, on the bed. It's a big heavy rubber thing and inside it, it had little metal strips that went all the way across, right? And then from there it actually went to a freaking cable and it went down into a box that was actually hooked up to your bedside. And then the, at the bedside there, this big box had a speaker in it, a red light and a smacked along like a snooze button kind of thing to stop this process. And basically what they said was that urine, only urine, because obviously it doesn't react to water they say, but anything with salt in it that reacts. Uh, we'll hit that, send a signal to the box, the alarm will go off and wake your ass up, forcing you to, you know, the alarm would go off and say, hey, squeeze that muscle and stop. Bed wet. No problem. I didn't know no better, because I'm a kid. What do I know? Young teenager, young kid, 10, 11 years old. All right, first night, sure enough, I had winky time, and I whizzed my, and hit the mat. Now, unfortunately, the first, very first night, it didn't work according to them. Basically, it electrocuted me. That's exactly what I felt. My ass was cooking for about two freaking minutes because first of all, I didn't wake up right away. No, nobody, not me. I was a heavy freaking sleeper. So while I was sleeping away, my ass was being cooked by 120 freaking volts. I still have the scars on my ass to this day. There's no hair that grows there, people. What the hell is wrong with it? Oh. My father and mother to this day say, no, it's just a large al alarm, it's not a, it's an imagination, you, you're thinking crazy stuff. Bullshit. I love the scars. <laughs> by the time a week went by, I'm telling you this, I slept with one eye open like that. If I actually sensed a drop come out of myself, I swear to you, I jumped the hell out of bed because there's no way in hell that I was going to get electrocuted again for a fifth or sixth night in a row. After that, for two weeks, that bed was still there, the mat was still there, dry boned. That was what they called a cure back then. Is there a moral to the story? Of course not. You're lucky. You kids nowadays have all this new great technology, and I had to go through the electrocution process. Anyway, thanks for stopping in again at the GSC. My name is Freddie Nevy, and I'll talk to you next week.